Now, thy king, your Romeo, will come forth. As he come forth, let us greet him with a hallelujah. 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 How is Israel y'all doing this evening? Hallelujah. Hasn't y'all been tough? Has he given us life? Hallelujah. Health, strength, the movement in our limbs. Hallelujah. He has given us bread. Hasn't he not? Have we had bread today? Hallelujah. Don't you know that one of the most essential parts of life, both spiritually and physically, is bread. Water, essential. We must have that. So it is in the Ruach. We must have bread. What is bread? Well, basically, bread can be anything, basically, that you can meal to make a patty or cake. Most of the time, we use wheat. You can use barley, different types of grains to make bread. And there's hundreds of different types, styles, ways you can eat bread or prepare bread. But there's a Pacific bread that Scripture talks about that we must consume. And it even expounds upon us as being Israel not to eat just any man's bread. We must be careful what we eat as a people and as a nation and how much we eat. Doesn't the saying say you are what you eat? If you eat a lot of fatty things, sugary substances, it will show in your physical man. If you are slack in giving your body the essential needs, then it will show forth on your body. You'll be weak, thin, anemic, not able to um, work in the field with the strength that should be in these bodies that Yahweh hath made. So it's important that we watch what we eat and we eat the right things. It's very important. For it show forth on our physical man and not only that, it shows on our spiritual man, the Ruah. So, with that knowledge, Yisrael, we must be careful. Because the enemy, and not only the enemy, many times want to bring, um, blame things on the, on, the, on the devil, on Satan, but you also are your own enemy. Your flesh, your will, your lust, what you desire, what you want. Things that seem pleasant to the flesh for a moment. Isn't that true, Yisrael? Sometimes it's best to eat a cracker than a cookie. A lot of times we want to eat two or three, four, five cookies. Isn't that right? So Satan, he has a way to dress his bread. Don't you know Satan has a bread? The world has a bread. And we should not partake of that. The bread of malice. The bread of hatred. And I will get into that. We shouldn't consume or be partakers of that bread. But Yahweh, there's a Pacific bread he says we should eat. And it's a living bread. And it's full of life. And it will sustain us and it will keep us, Israel. Even when we work, basically, we work to provide substance that this physical man can be sustained and can live. Basically, those you, you are listening by via live stream here, every, every step you take, basically, is to sustain life. Sure it is. And the reason why I chose this topic concerning the bread, what we should eat, the bread of Yah, is because of the time of season that we are in, the time of harvest. We're harvesting yet still, and we're looking for the time of Sukkah. So as we bring in our corn and our wheat or whatever we bring in, we don't consume it all, but there's some that we put aside. Wheat, corn, things of that nature, you can dry it, you can store it, you can ground it. And then in the time when there is no more harvest, you can reach into the meal barrel yes. or into your barrel of flour. Yes, and you can take that substance, your work of your labor that has been ground, sustained, and preserved. And what do you do with it? Add a little water yes, that's all right. and you can make bread. You can make a cake to sustain your life through the times of famine. Don't you know winter is a type of, of famine? You cannot grow in the wintertime what you can in the spring and in the summertime. So as the ant, we must be wise that we take this time to also preserve 
some of that which Yahweh had brought us with. And even in Scripture, it talks about Israel, Yehuda, disobeying Yahweh and not leaving the part which is necessary for those to glean that are not of the commonwealth of Israel. And he sent a curse unto Israel and Yehuda because we have disobeyed his commandments. He said in one part that we have become as, as Sodom and Gomorrah. We have become haughty as there's a scripture that talks about the daughters. And we have become, the Ruah have become like those daughters, that we have become greedy of the substance yes, sir. of the bread, but that bread is not of Yahweh. And then we abhor it from those that, are, that really need it, and we mock them. Yes, right. so, and it should not be. Also in this, the Ruah conditions of Yahweh, yeah. we must follow the procedure of what Yahweh has commanded us to go by, that we will be a people that are prosperous. Yeah. Hallelujah. Turn with me to Genesis, verse chapter 3, verse 17 through 9. I want to begin reading. And this is pertaining unto um, where Scripture first starts talking about bread or the sustaining of man and what man has to do and must do to sustain his life. And don't you know because of the sin, because we did not obey Torah, that it's a laborious, intense thing to plant and to harvest. And then we must fight the weeds and the things that we don't want in the garden. And it's something that we must do daily. Because if we do not, we will not bear a, a, a harvest in abundance. So it says here, Genesis chapter 3, verse 17, And unto Adam he said, Because you have hearkened unto the voice of your wife, the yes, yes. Isha, and has eaten of the tree of which I commanded you, saying, don't you know there's things that Yahweh tell us. He commands us not to partake of. He said, you should not eat of it. And he said, curse is the ground for your sake. And he said, in sorrow shall you eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth unto you. Don't we see that even as we garden in the physical and in the natural? that no matter what kind of pesticides or how you try to prevent weeds from growing, they still grow. Yes, sir. And they always come back. We think you eradicated every last one of them. Still yet one spring forth somewhere. Yeah. Thou shalt eat of the herb of the field. And he says, in the sweat of your face shall you eat. Eat what? Bread. Yes. And that is true. And your labors. You shall eat your bread. Yes. Through much labor and sweat and toiling, you shall eat your bread. He said, till you return unto the ground, for out of it was you taken. For dust you are, and unto dust shall you return. Uh, yes. So don't you see the labor that's involved, yes. that we may sustain this physical man? Yes. Yes. And the reason so is because from the beginning we have sinned before Almighty Yah. But Yahweh has a way. And Yahweh has made a deliverance for us, house of Israel, Yah, in what we consume and what we eat in this physical man, in this spiritual man. He has provided us bread, conditions of Yahweh, that we may live. Let me move on. I don't plan to be before us long tonight, but the time that I do expound upon this, excuse me, I want us to understand this is something that we must ponder continuously. Because... The enemy always offers us something that seems to be greater than what we have. As he said, it seems like the grass is greener on the other side, but it's not so, Yisrael. Well, I need something a little different. This bread of Yah, it, it tastes the same all the time. I, I want to get something that tickles my taste buds. Yes, sir. Don't do it. Why? Because it's detriment to your ruach. And then you will procure upon you what we have read in this first chapter that I read, a curse yes. upon your inward man. Yes. Right. Turn with me to Isaiah chapter 55, verse 1 through 3. I want to read. Scripture is very deliberate on what we consume on the bread. It talks about the bread of wickedness. The bread that is eaten in secret concerning the folly or foolishness. We should not partake of those types of bread, conditions of Yahweh. If a foolish man, see, and what you must understand, bread is the life substance. 
of that which one labors for. So if you labor after foolishness and you plant foolishness, you're going to procure unto you foolish things. What you sow, that shall you also reap. So if a foolish man, if all he does is sow foolishness, he stores foolishness, well, foolishness is going to be his bread. That's his means of life. He believed that's going to sustain him, his foolishness and his folly. We should not partake of his bread. He tried to offer us folly. Ha <laughs> ha, folly. No, I'm not going to partake of that folly. But many times we do, Yisrael. If you are a deceitful person and you're a liar, you plant lies, you have seeds of lies, you're going to produce lies. And what's going to happen? That's going to be your bread. You believe the lies are going to sustain you? It's not. You believe the lies is going to keep you in a prism of, of some kind of safety? It's a false safety. And we of Yisrael should not partake of that. Beautiful. Sometimes we become greedy. I want a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Oh, give me a taste of, of folly. Give me a taste of foolishness. Give me a taste of, of, of lust and concupiscence. Just, just a little bit. No. There's a certain bread that Yahweh tells us that we should partake of. And a certain seed we should plant and a certain harvest that we should procure unto Israel. Let me move on. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 1, begin reading. He said, Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. And he that hath no money, come ye and buy and eat ye. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Don't you know what Yahweh has to offer unto us, this bread of life? this water of life, yes. this substance that we will be sustained as a people. You don't have to have money to purchase this. He gives it unto the house of Israel and the house of Israel only freely. He said, wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread? We spend our sustenance and our life and our riches upon things that will not sustain us. That passes away. The bread that Yahweh offers to us shall never pass away. It should never wear out. You cannot exhaust it. There is plenty for everyone. He says this, to labor for that which satisfy not. Why do we labor for that which does not satisfy us? Listen, he said, hearken diligently unto me and eat you that which is tough. He's telling us what to eat. The things that are tough. The thing that brings the high or the high yield of Yahweh. And let your nephesh delight itself in the fatness. The fatness. Don't we, you know, you have a piece of steak. It's nice to have some fat in that steak. It seems to add some flavor and substance to the steak. Not just a dry, meaty, meaty thing with, with no fat. It's nice to have a little fat. Yahweh desires us to have the fatness of what he offers unto Israel. He says, incline your ear, you must, you must hearken, you must take heed, and come unto me, hear, shema, understand, perceive. And he says, and your nephew shall live. Don't we want to live? Yes. Don't we want to have the high of our yes. Yahweh? Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Not only should we live in this present life with health and the fatness of our Yahweh, but also when we pass from this physical life, we shall live forevermore, eternally. He said, your nephew shall live. And he said, I will. I will. It's my purpose. It's my desire. I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of Dawid. So even the mercies that Dawid even though he turned against Yahweh, he sinned against Yah. Yet there was plenty of mercies for Dawid. Don't you want to procure the mercies of Dawid? Hallelujah. It's written in Torah exactly what we must do that we may incur the blessing, the Dabar, Yahweh's word, his barakai, that we may live healthy. Isaiah chapter 3, verse 16. I want to begin reading through 26. See, we must understand conditions of Yahweh. When we do not walk in the paths of Yahweh, we will be as these daughters to Zion that I am about to read about. We'll be haughty, high-minded. 
our possessions, the wealth that we think we have, we hoard it, and we actually mock Yahweh. Where Yahweh, he judges Israel by our actions. If we walk according to Torah, he will judge us. And what will come out of that are tough things. But if we walk contrary unto Yahweh, then we will procure upon us the curse or the cursings of Yahweh, and Yahweh will judge us accordingly. It says, moreover, Yahweh saith, because the daughters of Zion are haughty, high-minded, prideful, and walk with stretched forth necks and wanton eyes. Wanton eyes. Everything we place our eyes upon, we want it. That is lustful, concupiscence, everything. What you have is not enough. What you take is not enough. You want more and more. Yeah. He says, walking and mincing as they go, strutting our stuff. Yes. We think we have it all. We don't have one thing. And we're not walking in the Dabar of Yahweh. He says, and making a tingling with their feet. Therefore, Yahweh will smite with a scap the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion, which is the honor of a woman is her hair. So Yahweh will smite us with this scalp that there will be no honor amongst us. That there will not be anything um, that brings this light or this glow that the house of Israel should have. Why? Because we have been a people that are haughty and high-minded. And Yahweh will discover her secret parts. Will uncover everything you think that you are hiding. And that day Yahweh will take away I'm sorry. Therefore, Yahweh will smite the scale the crown of the daughters of Zion, and Yahweh will discover her secret parts, 18. And in that day, Yahweh will take away the bravery of their tinkling ornaments about their feet and their calls and their round tires among the moon, the chains and the bracelet and the mufflers, the bonnets, everything that we adorn ourselves with that we think is flashy and attractive. He's going to take that away. The bonnets and the ornaments of the legs and the headbands and the tablets and the earrings and the rings and the nose jewels, the changeable suits of apparel. Don't you know this? We only should have one apparel. Yes, yes, yes. And that is this garment of Sadiq of righteousness of Yahshua HaMashiach. And the mantles and the wimples and the crisp pins, the glasses and the fine linen and the hoods, and the veils. And it shall come to pass that instead of a sweet smell, there shall be a stink. All these things we think we possess. We don't possess anything without the Dom of Yahshua, without the blood of Yahshua HaMashiach, without the Dabar of Yahweh. But yet we walk around as though we possess the world, that we have all that we need. Wherefore, if one will look with a spiritual eye, we are people that are naked. Hallelujah. And instead of a girdle, a rent. And instead of, and instead of well-set hair, baldness. And instead of a stokmar, a girdle of sackcloth. And burning instead of beauty. And he said, your men shall fall by the sword, and your mighty men in war. And her gates shall lament and mourn, and she shall be desolate, and she being desolate shall sit upon the ground. Because we have been a people that are haughty. Because we, we believe that we possess everything. We deny the bread of Yahweh. We, be, we deny the less from Yahshua HaMashiach because we thought we had it all, all that we need. And that is not true, house of Israel. Yahweh has sent a curse amongst the house because we have walked out of his Dabar where he has commanded us. Turn me to Isaiah chapter 4, verse 1. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's important conditions of Yahweh that we are people that are set, that our roots are ground deep in the Dabar and the Torah of all by the Yahweh, that we're not moved because the enemy continuously tries us. And after we think we've gone over one hurdle, yet as we go down the way or to direct the path of Abba Yahweh, yet there lies another trial and another hurdle for us. 
And it's important that we eat this sustaining bread that Yahweh gives unto Yisrael. Did not Yahweh send bread in the wilderness unto Yisrael? Even though we murmured, they murmured and they um, didn't think Yahweh provide or could provide all that they needed. Yet also he sent them meat, but he also sent him them bread. And the substance that came from the Shemayon of this bread, they could not explain it. They didn't know what it is. Sure they did. It didn't have a name. But yet, this bread was a type of Yahshua HaMashiach. As I get on, we will see or read upon a scripture that says, Yahshua said to himself, or, or to, the, to the mass, he said, I am the Lesha. Yeah. I am the bread yeah. that comes forth from the Shemayims. Yeah. Did not that bread in the wilderness come forth from the Shemayims? Yeah. Wasn't it enough for everyone? Yeah. They didn't have to be greedy, but yet there was greed in the camp. And they consumed more than what, the, what Moshe said that they should take. We should not, this is of Yahweh. The word of Yahweh, you can't go around it. You can't go over it, and you can't go under it, but you must go in at the door. Anything that we add or take upon from Torah, the scripture says that the curses shall be added unto us. So Yahweh gives us exactly what we need. We don't have to hunt after other meats, after other lashing, other bread, or anything to sustain this life. He gives it, and it's all in Yahshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. Let me move on. It says here, In Isaiah chapter 4, verse 1. There's a reason why I'm reading this. Hallelujah. It says, And in that day seven women shall take hold of one man, saying, We will eat our own bread. Our own bread. We will provide what is needed for our houses. We don't need this Dom of Yahshua HaMashiach. We don't need you to provide anything for us. We will amass what is needed for the house. We will go out and bring it to the house. Don't you know Yisrael has done this as a people? We have done this. Yes. We have denied what Yahweh has offered unto us, house of Yisrael, yes. yes. as being foolish virgins unto Abba Yahweh, thinking that we have enough and we can provide what we need to sustain life in the Ruach. But it's not so. Yahweh provides the bread. Yahshua is the bread. It's up to the ark to provide the leshem and the bread. Hallelujah. But these women said, we will eat or we will provide our own bread. He said, all we ask you to do, and we wear wear our own apparel, our own garments. Yahweh has given us the garment of Sadiq. We should not be walking around in our own garments. And they said this, only let us be called by your name. You think Yahweh, as we see here, These women, seven women, they're in a rebellious state. They have no need of the man, but yet they want to bear his name. Don't you know that is what this, if I may say, church entity, doctrine that we have been taught for so long, Yisrael, we have done this. We have done this. Procure upon us the blessings that we can hark upon ourselves by your name. We don't need anything else. But we do. We need more than just this conditions of Yahweh. What we think we have amassed in this life. And he says to take, they say to take away the reproach. Do you think the cursing is not going to ravish these seven women in scripture? Or the house of Yisrael? Hallelujah. If we do not walk in the debar of Yahweh, Yahweh is going to pour upon us a reproach and a judgment if we do not walk according to his Torah. We should not Try to, we should not try to do things in the flesh conditions of Yahweh, in our own way, wear our own garments, try to provide to our own houses what we think is fit. There's only one thing that is fit, and that is the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. Let's step back a little to chapter 3 of Isaiah, verse 1 through 3. I want to begin reading. And this is concerning the house of Israel. It says, For behold, Yahweh of hosts doth take away from Jerusalem and from Yehuda, it says, the stay or the mishan or the mishan. That is the sustaining structure that upholds and that strengthens. That's what the stay is. The support or help 
or the protector or the substance that upholds. And he says also, and the staff. What is a staff used for? Yes, sir. Yes. If you have a weak leg, you see those that have ailments in the body, they carry a staff or a cane, as we say. And that cane just relieves enough pressure to help relieve some of the pain. Maybe not all the pain, yes. but it, it helps you move on in the path that you're going. And y'all always say, I'm going to remove this. Because we have been a people in the house that have turned our backs upon Abba Yahweh. Yes. Yes. And he said, because you have done that, don't you know I provided everything that you needed? I've given you the lesson of life. I provided water that you may live. But yet you gone a whoring, showing your wares, Yisrael, flashing yourself before the world, disobeying my commandments. Well, he said, this is what I'm going to do unto this house. Let me move on. Or the staff, or the mishef, the support, or the substance, or a walking stick, as I had exclaimed. And he says, the whole, coal, all of it. I'm not going to leave you a crumb. He said, the whole stay of bread. What we have labored for. Don't we find ourselves, haven't we labored in these past months? Yes. Planting, yes. weeding, yes. harvesting. Yes. And it took the Yahweh to send his rain that we may produce the increase. Yahweh give us the increase. He said, I'm going to take all that away from you. Because you have counted my word as not. As not being substance or a substantial part of your growth or your ruach. And not only shall you take away the whole or all of the bread, but also the whole stay of water. We will. Did I not from the beginning explain that we need that? We must have bread and we must have water to sustain this physical man. We must have the bread of Almighty Yahweh and the reigning of his Ruach to sustain life in the Ruach. And Yahshua HaMashiach. There's no other way. You can fool yourself. Other doctrines, go ahead. Other beliefs. You can try them if you want to. But this is the only life, the Dabar of Yahweh, the Torah. This is the only way that we're going to live and that we're going to be sustained as a people, especially in this generation. Yes, we must have this. We must eat the lesson of Yahweh. Yeah. We can't be one that want to go out and explore and try different things. There's no time for that. Yeah. We've done that we, when we were not um, in the Ruach of Abba Yahweh, before Yahweh enlightened us. We've done those type things. And what did it bring us? Nothing but death, heartache, pain, and sorrow. That's all it brings. But the dawn, the, the bread of Yahshua HaMashiach, this life giver that Yahweh has provided, that comes down from the Shemayims, shall keep us. That's our stay. Yahshua is our staff. Hallelujah. So let us not do the things that Yahweh said he would take away these things from us or apply the curse unto Yisrael. And these as I go on in verse 2, are the stay and the staff. This is what Yahweh said he would take from amongst the house. And we see this even in Yisrael. So let us be attentive. Let us listen. He says here, first of all, I would take away the mighty man, the man of valor, the warriors, those that would stand up for the house of Yahweh, the man of war. These are the stays. This is the staff of Yisrael. Yahweh has given us these things that we may be a people that should grow strong, that we would be protected. Listen, the judge, the judge. If Yahweh took away judgment from the house of Yisrael, we will, we will be as nothing, as the dust. Without judgment, not Yahweh judging us. Him setting those in the midst that judge and that judge um, Sadiq with righteousness and with equity. And he says, the prophet, the Nabi, he's going to take those things away. These are the stays. These are the staff. This is the bread of Yisrael. He says, the prudent man, the Zakain, those that has the wisdom amongst the house of Yisrael, the ancient, the captain of 50, and the honorable man. We need honorable men in this hour. We must have those that are captains, that are able to take um, certain numbers of Yisrael and lead us. They are able to guide us, Yisrael. He says, the counselor. Where are the counselors today? Where are those amongst the ark and amongst the whole that counsel, 
that can instruct and that can guide one when they're veering out of the way. Those that can provide the right answers when the questions are asked amongst the house of Yisrael. These are the staves and the staff that Yahweh said that he would take, and he has taken these from the house of Yisrael. Where are these? Do we see the abundance of the fruit of this today? Hallelujah. He says also the cunning artificer. What is that basically? One that is able to reach the throne of Abba Yahweh. The one that are able to bring the pure palah, prayer, unto Abba Yahweh. Yeah. To offer the incense unto Abba Yahweh. Yeah. And it says the elegant orator, again, basically one that is able to bring and open up the dark or the deep things of Yahweh unto the house. And that are able to do it in a way that Yisrael Yah can understand. We need this in the house, Yisrael Yah. We're not going to survive without these staves and without these staffs. The things that bring strength are like pillars in the house. If we were to take out these pillars in this building right, right here, what do you think would happen? The roof would cave in. It would fall in. And it would kill every last one of us. So we must have these pillars to hold up the weight. Those that are able to explain, those that are able to bring the pillar for the house of Yahweh. Hallelujah. Where is the pure pillar of the prayer? The earnesty, Yisrael. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. These are the stays and the staffs of Yisrael. Yahweh said he would take these away because we have mocked him. We have brought his name unto, into, unto shame, Yisrael. We will see that as I move on. And he said, and I will give children to be their princes. Children? Because we have denied the zakain that Yahweh has placed amongst the house. The elegant orators, those that are able to bring the pillar. He said, okay, then I'm going to set those that do not have the wisdom. Sure. I'm going to set children that are going to lead you. Children are going to be your princes. And babes shall rule over them. And the people shall be oppressed. Everyone by another. And everyone by his neighbor. Yeah. That's, that's an a awesome, if I may say, um, backsliding or falling of any nation or any house when there are those that are not able to lead with the wisdom and with the power of any nation, especially the house of Israel. He said, the children shall behave himself proudly against the ancient. Mm -hmm. And we see that in this hour. Sure we do. The children that tell their mothers to shut up. And I've seen this in stores. Yeah. Yeah. Have no regard. Yeah. Hit their parents. And the base against the honorable. He said, when a man shall take hold of his brother, the house of his father, saying, thou hast clothing, you have clothing, you're covered. He said, be our ruler, and let this ruin, this ruin. We find the house in a ruin because Yahweh has implemented this judgment. Let this ruin be under your hand. Take this responsibility. And that day he should swear, saying, I will not be an healer. Why? Because he doesn't possess the root uh, or the substance to bring the house back into order. There's only one that could bring the house back into order, and that is Yahshua HaMashiach. There's no need to look into one or your neighbor when he's just as wicked as you are to take on the responsibilities and to bring the house back in. It, it, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. He said, for my house is neither bread, I don't have the sustenance or the strength, nor clothing. He said, make me not a ruler of the people. So we must have a ruler condition of Yahweh. We must follow the Zarkane. We must follow the, um, those that are set as elders amongst the house of Israel. Because if we don't, Yahweh is going to do this. We're going to be led by, we're going to be led by children. What children? We're going to be led by the feelings and the thoughts of our own mind. We have very childish ways. It don't have to literally mean a, a, a baby or Sarai, someone like of that nature. But we'd be led by our own feelings. The things that are not mature in your own life, those things will lead you. And where it's going to lead you is to death and damnation. That's all it's going to lead you to. It's not going to lead you to the high of Abba Yahweh. Hallelujah. Turn me to Isaiah um, chapter 3 and verse 8. The next verse. Hallelujah. See, and we, we understand that as, we, as I was reading how Yahweh took away the stave and the staff, 
the, the pillars, the things that sustain the house. The house went to ruin. It went to ruin. Verse 8. Why did the house go to ruin? It tells us here in verse 8. For Jerusalem, for Jerusalem is ruined and Yehuda has fallen. Why? It says here, because their tongue, and their tongue, the tongue could be an unruly evil, can, can, can it be? Hallelujah. For their tongue and their doings or our deeds are against Almighty Yahweh. They're against Almighty Yahweh. They don't lift up the Most High. They're not a testimony unto the power of Yahweh. And it says to provoke his eye, the eyes of his splendor, or how he is how he is seen by others, giving the world a plate or a reason to mock Almighty Yahweh. That's why Yahweh takes away the bread and the staff that sustains the house of Israel, Yah, because we have mocked him as a people. We have not walked in his debar. We have not obeyed his statutes. Hallelujah. So this judgment have come upon us. Sure. Hallelujah. As a house. Is there a remedy? Sure there's a remedy. Sure there. Sure there. Because we have denied the Zalkain, we have denied the Shalishim among the house of Israel, Yah. We have gone and tasted of other breads, other religions, if I must say. We have gone to horn here and there, showing our wares. Yes. Hallelujah. Instead of remaining in the place that Yahweh has told us to stay. And because of that, we have brought Yahweh's honor or his splendor and caused it to be blasphemed or mocked. Hallelujah. And Yahweh commanded us not to just partake of any bread. Turn with me to uh, 2 Thessalonica, Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 6 through verse 15. I want to begin reading. Hallelujah. We must watch who we fellowship among, who we are with, who we eat with. Hallelujah. Those are, that are not of the house of Israel, you, you can't play with the world. As the saying goes, if you play with a beast or with a dog, he'll lick you in the mouth. It says here in verse 6 of 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, he says, now we command you, brethren, this is a commandment, so we must take heed to this. We cannot count it lightly. We cannot push it to the side and say, you know, I don't need that piece of bread. This is bread right here. He said, I command you, brethren, in the name of Yahshua HaMashiach, that you withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly. A commandment that we do not dwell or partake or be in part of brothers of those amongst the house of Israel Yah, that walk disorderly? Why? And not after tra the tradition which he has received of us or the commandments of Yahweh. For yourselves know that you ought to follow us. Why? Why did, why did he proclaim that? Why did he say you ought to follow us? Because he is an example of Yahshua HaMashiach. He, is a, he was an example of the Torah. So he said, don't be led of the foolishness and the folly of the world or a brother that is going astray. He said, because we behave not ourselves disorderly among you, neither did we eat any man's bread for naught. We didn't count it a light thing that we should partake of a foolish man's bread or a adulterous bread or any types of bread. There is um, a table that is spread with all kinds of bread on it. But it doesn't mean that we be partakers of it, Yisrael, yeah. Let me read that again. Neither did we eat any man's bread or that which he deemed was a substance or a strength in his life. A foolish man, his foolishness and his folly is his substance. One that lies, his lies is his substance. That's all he has for his strength. For not, but wrought with labor and, betrayal and travail night and day. Why? That we might not be chargeable to you, chargeable to any of you. He says, not because we have not power, but to make ourselves an example unto you to follow us. Sure. Just look at your own life, Israel. Have we lived our lives that we would or may be examples to the house? 
Do we have the lesson that is needed that one can partake of that, that he or she may be strengthened? That we're able to um, expound upon the Torah of Yahweh, to bring understanding and enlightenment. He says, for even, for even when we were with you, he says, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, neither shall he eat. And that's a true statement. I mean, if, if you are out by yourself, let's say you're in the wilderness, you have the knowledge to, to put seed in the ground, that it may bring forth fruit, but you don't put any effort, you sit on a rock, let time pass, you don't do anything, sure there's not going to be any substance for you to sustain life or to live or to eat upon. As it said in the beginning, concerning Adam, he said, by the, the sweat of your brow shall you eat your bread. He said, for we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, working not at all, not doing anything, not applying the hand. That's a wicked thing. You know, you're a distortioner, house of Israel, y'all. If you see an op, or you should be amongst a group of op, and you're not putting in your part. You're not putting in the effort you should put in. The scriptures say you should not even eat if you're not one that labors. But look at this. But our busybodies, laboring in the wrong thing. You're a busybody. It says in verse 12, Know them that are such. We command and exhort you by Yahshua HaMashiach that with quietness they work and eat their own bread. So because they work in quietness, and it says here, and they're busybodies, they have their own little substance they think they can hide in their secret places and eat in quietness. It don't take much to labor to obtain wickedness, but to attain the high of, of Yahweh, we must labor conditions of Yahweh. And the labor that Yahweh has given us, it's not a heavy burden, it's not a yoke that we cannot bear, but it's an easy. Hallelujah. It says in verse 13, but you, brethren, be not weary in well-doing. He's saying press on. Don't worry about those that are extortioners. You press on in the debar of Yahweh. And if any man obey not the words by this epistle or this standard, note that man and have no company with him. So you must mark that man. You note that man. Have no company with him. Don't be a partaker of his sins, of his iniquity, of his slackness. Don't eat of his bread. He said, yet count him not as an enemy, but he says, admonish him as a brother. So there must be rebuking. He must be marked among the congregation. He must be revealed. Don't let him keep hiding, but you must bring him to the forefront. Expose him. Rebuke him. Hallelujah. We're not worried about the world, what the enemy does unto us, but the one that is of the house, you must rebuke that one. Come on, uh, you got to pull up. Don't, don't hide away in your own place to try to get by. We have a labor that must be done. There's a labor that we, must have, have to, that we have to do, Israel, y'all, that we can enter into the kingdom of Yahweh. Hallelujah. Yochanan, John chapter 6, verse 22. Hallelujah. And this is concerning the multitude in this chapter, in this time, that when Yahshua was traveling, the multitude did not follow him only but for the fishes and the loaves, the bread and the healings. That's all. Yahshua, he explained unto them, you know, those things are not going to preserve you. I have meat or I have bread that you know not of. And we must eat of that meat or that bread. What is that meat, that bread? It is the dawn. It is the body of Yahshua HaMashiach. We must partake of that, Yisrael. Verse 22. The day following when the people which stood on the other side of the sea saw that there was none other boat there, save the one there into his disciplined ones, the disciples, were entered. And that Yahshua went not with his disciples into the boat, but that his disciples were gone away alone. Howbeit came there other boats from Tiberias nigh unto the place where they did eat bread. After that, Yahweh, Yahshua had given thanks. Mm -hmm. Then the people therefore saw that Yahshua was not there. Neither his disciples, and also took shipping. So they're trying to follow Yahshua HaMashiach. 
and came to Capernaum seeking Yahshua, verse 25. And when they found him on the other side of the sea, they said unto him, Rabbi, teacher, master, when comest thou hither? When will you draw near unto us? And Yahshua answered unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, ye seek me, you follow me, not because you saw the miracles, but because you did eat of the loaves, of the bread, the bread that I produce. You follow me for the wrong reason. The people follow him, the multitude, for the wrong reason. Why are we following in this path? Are we following Yahshua HaMashiach for the wrong reasons? Are we looking just for the shelter and for the food? Or are we searching for something that is much deeper? Something that is much more meaningful than just this present life? Because you did eat the loaves and you were filled. Labor not for the meat which perisheth. Those things perish, Israel. We shouldn't labor for the things that perish. Houses, home, possessions. What is that? We see examples of people nationwide, worldwide, that has labored their whole lives to attain a few dollars or a few acres of property or a house. And yet, that's not going to sustain them. And then people's eyes are becoming more and more open, even at this time that we're in, in this nation. He said, but for we should labor for the meat or the bread, the nation, which endures unto everlasting life. What is that? I want some of that. I want that bread that endures even unto everlasting life. That's the only thing that's going to sustain us, Yisrael. That endures forever. Which the Son of Man shall give unto you. You mean Yahshua HaMashiach? He has this bread to give unto the house of Yisrael that we will be sustained. Hallelujah. For him hath Yahweh the Abba sealed. So not only have Yahshua, he is this bread that has been given unto Yisrael. Not only that, but he has been sealed. Hallelujah. By the Ruach of Abba Yahweh. You don't want to go into a grocery store and grab a loaf of bread that's been sitting on the shelf for a couple of days and no covering on it, do you? So I, I'd rather get that which is sealed, and I can look at that and say there's no molding or no decay. Hallelujah. Don't you know Yahweh has sealed the house of Yisrael? Yeah. Yeah. The body of Yahshua HaMashiach was sealed, was it not? When it was put into the ground? Was, did not the Ruach seal Yahshua HaMashiach? Yeah. And after the, a certain matter day, the third day, did he not rise up? Yeah. Hallelujah. With no blemishes or no cankers? He was sealed, Yisrael. Yeah. By the Ruach of Abba Yahweh. Hallelujah. Yeah. And so are we sealed, house of Yisrael. Yeah. And it says in verse 28, then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of Yahweh? And Yahshua answered and said unto them, See, we must work, Israel. Don't, don't be, you're not going to be one that is lazy, that do anything, and then, and then expect to be fed this lesson with this bread of life. You're not going to sin and walk contrary to the Torah of Yahweh and expect to receive this bread of life. And he said, What is this? They asked that we may do the works of Yahweh. And this is it. This is key right here. That you believe. Yes. That you believe. What? On him. Yes. On him who he hath sent. Hallelujah. Didn't, did not Yahweh send Yahshua HaMashiach? Yes. Did it not come from the Shemayims? Hallelujah. Yes. That we may see. I'm sorry, let's go back. They said, therefore, unto him, what is this sign? Show us a sign. We need something physical and tangible that we may see. What sign showeth you then? Show us something, Yahshua, that we may see and believe you. Don't you know that Yahweh, after all he has done for us, house of Israel, Yah, after all we have seen and the small things we have gone through, if it takes another miracle or a sign, house of Israel, Yah, it, for us to believe what Yahweh has done, it, that's a shame. If Yahweh was to show himself before us tonight, we would not believe. Yahweh has done enough in our lives, cleansed us, washed us, kept us from evil. Hallelujah. That should be enough. But we want to see more miracles. Look, look what they say, that we may believe you. What does you work? What is that word? Show us that word, Yahshua. Verse 31. 
They said, our fathers did eat manna in the desert. And it is written, he gave them bread from the Shemayims to eat. Then Yahshua said unto them, verily, verily, I say unto you, Moshe gave you not that bread from the Shemayims, oh, yes. but my Abba giveth you the true bread from the Shemayim. Yeah. See, the multitude, their eyes were blinded from what Yahweh had done before their very eyes. They could not see it. They could not understand yeah. that Yahshua HaMashiach is that bread that was sent from the Shemayim. Don't we know that today, Yisrael? Yeah. That Yahshua HaMashiach is the bread that has been sent from the Shemayans. Hallelujah. So we must partake of him. Let us eat of him. Let us partake of him and see how sweet he is. That he is tough, Yisrael. It says in verse 33, For the bread of Yahweh is he which cometh down from the Shemayim and giveth life unto the whole land, unto the whole world. Hallelujah. That's some powerful lesson, Yisrael. Then said they unto him, Master, evermore give us this bread. They did not know Yahshua even before them was this bread. Give us this bread. And Yahshua said unto them, he said, I am. Hallelujah. Yahshua is saying to us tonight, because we don't have the means within ourselves to preserve this physical man or the Ruach. It takes the Ruach of Yahweh. So he said unto the house of Israel tonight, I am. I am the bread. I am the lesh of Israel. Partake of me. Eat of me. I am the bread of life. And I am he that come, I'm sorry. And he that cometh to me shall never hunger. Hallelujah. Why are we still yet hungry? Why does it seem like there's something that is still yet missing? Yisrael, Yah. Yahshua says unto the house of Yisrael tonight, I am. Eat of me. I am this bread. You believe you're lacking. You believe that you don't have enough. Partake of me. And you shall be full, Yisrael. And you shall never hunger. And he that believe, you must have a moon on Yisrael. You're not going to understand the fulfilling of this bread, how it takes away this hunger, unless you believe house of Yisrael. Yeah. You must believe on the works of Yahshua HaMashiach yeah. and what Yahweh has invested. And he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Verse 36. But I say unto you that you also have seen me. You're looking at me, you have seen me Whoa. and have believed not. So it's not enough that we, that we see Yahshua HaMashiach, because they that this house or this multitude at this, this time, they seen him in the physical and yet could not grasp what Yahweh was doing, what Yahweh has done. Verse 37, he says, All that the Abba has given me shall come unto me. And him that cometh unto me will I in no wise cast out. I won't refuse you if you come unto me. For I came down from the Shemayims not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. Don't you know that was Yahshua's bread? That he had to eat of this life or the debar of Yahweh. That it was not his will. It's not what he wanted to establish. But it's what the Abba wanted to establish. And this is the Abba's will which has sent me. That of all which he has given me, I should lose nothing. But should rise up again in the last day. Don't you believe Yahshua HaMashiach in the last day? He rises or he has risen up. Hallelujah. Well, how did he rise, Zarkane, Yeramiah? By the Ruah. That's how he was risen. That's what sealed him when he was in the earth or in the grave or in the tomb. Hallelujah. And don't you know that same Ruah that sealed him? Seals the house of Yisrael, that in our last days, Yisrael, if we partake of this bread, Yahshua HaMashiach, we shall get up also. That is our hope, Yahweh. That's our hope, Yisrael. Hallelujah. That we will get up. That this sustaining bread, this word Yahshua HaMashiach, will be plenty and enough. That we will not go out a whoring or seeking others or finding other paths or other ways. There's only one way. There's only one life, and there's only one bread of life, and that is in Yahshua, HaMashiach, our Messiah. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone that seeth the Son 
and believeth on him yeah. may have everlasting life. Do you believe tonight, conditions of Yahweh? Yeah. Hallelujah. Do you have a moon eye to believe? Yeah. To hold on to this bread. Yeah. Hallelujah. To hold on to the Dabar of Abba Yahweh. And he says this, I will raise him up at the last day. Hallelujah. What makes bread rise, Yisrael? Hallelujah. It takes leaven to make bread rise. And scripture talks about the leaven that should not be in the bread, but also talks about a leaven that we should have. We should have this leaven or the Ruach of Yahweh in our lives. Hallelujah. That we may rise again. Hallelujah. We can rise above our problems, our situations, our doubts, our thoughts, those things that are not of Yahweh, those things that try to hold you back. Hallelujah. The grave could not hold Yahshua. Neither can the grave hold Yisrael. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me read verse 40 again. This is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up in the last days. The Yahudim then murmured at him because he said, I am the bread. They did not like that. That he said, I am the bread, or I am, or I am the stave and the staff of Almighty Yahweh, which cometh down from the Shemayim, verse 42. And they said, is this not Yahshua, the son of Yosef, whose father and mother we do know? You see how they discounted this bread of life? Yahshua HaMashiach. They did not have the Amunah to believe. How is it then that he said, I have come down from the Shemayim? Yahshua therefore answered and said unto them, Murmur not you amongst yourselves. So he was able to discern. That is part of the lesson, being able to discern. He says, No man can come unto me except the by which has sent me draw him. Hallelujah. Don't you know Yahweh has drawn us unto Yahshua HaMashiach tonight? Hallelujah. It's by the hand of Yahweh that we are here today to hear this word. Let us eat of the lesson tonight. Hallelujah. And I will raise him up in the last day. He said, it is written in the Nabi, the prophets, that, and they sh shall be all thought of Yahweh, every man therefore that hath heard, and hath learned of the Abba cometh unto me. Not that any man hath seen the Abba, hath seen which is, it, which is of Yahweh, yeah. that hath seen the Abba, he says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believe on me hath everlasting life. Do you believe on the lesson tonight? Yahshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. Then we have eternal life. We have everlasting life. He says, I am what? The bread. The bread of what? The bread of high here. The bread of life. I am the bread of life. I am that which was sent in the wilderness. I am the bread of life. He said, your avats did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. But this bread, this is the bread which cometh down for the Shemayim, that man may eat thereof and not die. Yahshua is the bread that came from the Shemayim, that we may partake, that we may eat to our full conditions of Yahweh and not see death or not die or see separation from Almighty Yahweh. He said in verse 51 that I am the living bread which cometh down from the Shemayim. If any man eat of this bread, you must eat it. You must eat it. He shall live for what? Forever. Do you believe that, Yisrael? If we partake of this lesh and this bread of Yahshua HaMashiach, that we shall live forever. What is this bread, Yisrael? What is this bread? It says, and the bread that I will give is my body or my flesh. Hallelujah. Don't you know Yahweh, Yahshua HaMashiach gave his flesh, this bread for Yisrael, which I would give for the life of the Olam, the world. And it says here, the Yahunim therefore strove among themselves, saying, how can this man give his flesh to eat? Then Yahshua said to them, very, very, I say unto you, except you eat of the son of Adam of man and drink his blood, he said, you have no life in you. Do we have high tonight? Do we have the life? In our bosom, Yisrael, have we eaten of the lesson, the bread of Yahshua Hamashiach, that we may live? Hallelujah. 
He says, whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life. Isn't that what Yahshua proclaimed? So are we going to have eternal life any other way but this way? The lesher, the body of Yahshua HaMashiach, Messiah, and the dumb, hallelujah. If you try to come in any other way, you are a thief and a robber. And I will raise him up at the last days, hallelujah. So here's why, y'all, we must eat of this lesher, this word, the devour of Yahweh that was sent from the Shema, the Shemayim. We saw, or we saw an example of the type um, in the wilderness as Yisrael traversed out of Mizraim, but that bread did not sustain them in the physical. They, they perished. Hallelujah. But Yahweh has sent this bread, his word, his dabah, rain this bread down on Yisrael that we may partake of the bread. Hallelujah. And live forevermore. Don't you want to live? Hallelujah. You know, we answered that question easily, but it takes a discipline. It takes an effort. It takes work to live. I mean, we answer that easily, but are we doing the things that we should do? Are we eating the right diets? Are we exercising? Are we laboring that we may fulfill this high or this life? In these bodies, these earthen vessels, because what you do in your earthen vessel and this physical man shows what you're doing in the Ru'ah. So if you're not willing to labor, you're not going to be willing to labor in the Torah. You're not going to be willing to take that extra step. And really that extra step or that extra mile is what really gives you the vigor. I mean, you could go out every day and run a mile, but it's going to come a time where you got to run a mile and a half. Get up to two miles, three miles, four miles. Or what, what would that show, Zarkin Yeramia? Well, that shows a strengthening in your physical man. Yeah. So is it in the Ruah. We must be a people that continuously move on, not fall back, not mark time or stay in one place, but we must continuously progress. We must enhance our life and ourselves. And the only way you're going to do that is by feasting, eating upon the Lashem, Yahshua HaMashiach, the spread of life, yes. Israel. There's no other way. The world tried to offer us every day other ways. Put a little sugar on it, make it look appeasing, a little frosting. So put some decorations on that, it look nice, doesn't it? But it's death, Yisrael. Right, Yahweh has given us the bread of life, and that life is only in Yahshua, Hamashiach. Hallelujah. I'm bringing this message to some of the end, Yisrael. Right, Hallelujah. More than anything, I pray that you took a bite of this bread tonight. Hallelujah. Let it fill your bosom. Let it enrich you. There's nothing like a fresh loaf of bread. The scripture also talks about, and I, I, I'm going to continue in this. This is not the last you're going to hear this message concerning the bread, because there's just so much in Torah that tells us about the bread. And then, as I mentioned earlier, as I begun this concerning the harvest, what you put in your meal barrel, all your labors, you must understand this, Israel, y'all. And Torah talks about this. What you labor for is what you're going to consume, or it's, it's what your bread. So if you go out, you plant a garden, you don't tend to it as you should, you should, you don't reap a nice, healthy harvest. Well, when it comes time for you to reach into your meal barrel, you're not going to have the sustenance that you need. You're not going to have enough to make the bread that you need. And when you make a loaf of bread, it's going to have things in it that is distasteful. Your barley is going to have a bitter taste to it. The wheat is going to be, it's going to have a sour taste. It's not going to be something that you can present unto Abba Yahweh as an offering. Hallelujah. We must present what Yahweh asks and what he desires of us. And what is that? To present unto him a sweet and a smelling savor. That in Sukkot, we could offer offering unto Yahweh of our meal offerings. Hallelujah. And it would be in abundance. It would not have the weevils or the things that, or the, the cankerous things that eat at the life of Yahshua HaMashiach. Yes. But it would be one that we're able to hear a, a, a whole, take, take a piece of this, take a bite of this. We can share it amongst each other at the time of Sukkot. And then we can look back 
at the many blessings, the bare cloud of Almighty Yahweh that he has given unto us. Yes. And then we can really bring a praise unto Abba Yahweh that is acceptable. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So how you labor and what you labor for, Scripture says this, shall be your bread. So if you labor in wickedness, then what you consume, you're going to produce bread of wickedness. If you labor in lasciviousness, you're going to receive lasciviousness. That is going to be your bread. But if we plant the seeds that Yahweh commands us to plant, what are those seeds? Those seeds of Ahaba, the seeds of um, patience, the seeds of, of, um, of Imuna, yes. then we're going to produce or we're going to be able to eat of that, Yisrael. Yeah. So what you labor for, what you plant, that's your bread. Hallelujah. So let us labor in Yahshua HaMashiach. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That we may partake of him. Hallelujah. Wait. Hallelujah. There's just a few verses I want to read. Um, just bits and pieces of types of bread. Hallelujah. It says in, in Psalms, and Psalms, we he expresses, you will find bread or leshem in Psalms numerous times and, and in different expressions. But it says here in Psalms, um, chapter 80, verse 5, he says, you feedest them with the bread of tears. And give us them tears to drink and in great measures. Sure. Bread of tears. Also talk about the bread of sorrows in Psalms 127 verse 2. It says, it is vain for you to rise up early and to sit up late to eat the bread of sorrows. Sure. Yes. For so he giveth his beloved sleep or he giveth his beloved rest. It also talk about um, a secret bread of, of that of folly. Stolen waters are sweet, it says. And bread eaten in secret, it says, is pleasant. It talks about the bread of deceit in Proverbs verse, um, chapter 20, verse 17. The bread of deceit is sweet to a man, but afterward his mouth shall be filled with gravel. With gravel? You know how gravel feels when you pick up gravels and rocks and stones? It's rough and harsh. That's what you'll be filled with if you partake of the bread of deceit. It talks about the bread of idleness, Proverbs 31, 27. She looketh well to the ways of her house and eateth not the bread of idleness. So if you, are whole, if you want to look well to your house, then you don't find yourself idle. Uh, but always do something with your hands. Hallelujah. To the Yahweh. And it also talks about my last verb in Hosea chapter 9, verse 4, concerning the bread of murmurs. It says, They shall not offer wine offerings unto Yahweh, neither shall they be pleasing unto him. It says that their offering of their sacrifices shall be unto him as the bread of murmurs. Do not Yisrael offer up the bread of murmuring unto Yahweh? And he, he wasn't pleased in that. So you always not going to be pleased in us offering the bread of murmurings. It says, all that eat thereof shall be polluted. For their bread is for their souls. For their bread is their soul shall not come into the house of Almighty Yahweh. So neither the nephesh or their soul shall enter into the house or neither that bread of the murmuring. Hallelujah. So let us not eat or be partakers of the bread of murmuring, of deceit. Hallelujah. But let us partake of the lesson of Yahshua HaMashiach, and we will be filled, hallelujah, to the fullest. And not only that, but if we partake of this bread, Yahshua makes a covenant, and it's a promise unto the house of Israel that he will raise us up in the last days, on the last time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I brought Yahweh for that. He has given us provision, house of Israel. He has given us the bread. So let us labor for the bread that has come from Yahweh Almighty Yahshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. I pray this small message has been an inspiration to your love. Hallelujah. That we watch what we eat, house of Israel, both in the physical and in the Ruah. Let us stand to our feet. Hallelujah. 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 Abba Yahweh, we do totally you, Abba Yahweh, for this midweek scripture event, truth, Abba Yahweh. 
that you have shown us, and not only that, Yahweh, you have given us the bread, Yahshua HaMashiach. So as we leave this house tonight, Yahweh, you'll buy it, that we be careful, Yahweh, what we allow into our ruah, what we allow into our minds, Abba Yahweh, and what we eat or what we consume upon, Abba Yahweh. For you have given us, Yahweh, all that we need is in Yahshua. Hallelujah. Joy, he supplies. Hallelujah. Shalom, he supplies. All that we need is in Yahshua HaMashiach. But all things we do, told you, Yahweh, we barak you for also the rain you have given us today, Yahweh. Send your ruach upon the house of Israel, Yahweh, this dry ground, Abba Yahweh, that we may be refreshed once again. We do barak you for those that are listening by via live stream. We ask you to bring, take all those that have come tonight home safely, Abba Yahweh. And as you have told us in the scripture tonight, Abba Yahweh, give your beloved rest tonight. And all things we do barak you. In the mighty name of Yahshua HaMashiach, we do pray. Hallelujah. 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 Yahweh. Hallelujah. Yahweh Barak, your condition. Hallelujah.